Welcome to another continuation of our Real Care How To videos. Here we would like to show you some field repairs that you can try on your baby that may help fix certain functions that are not operating. So let's say you have run the troubleshooting test on the baby and there are certain portions on that test that did not pass. Before you contact product support, give some of these tricks a try. Now let's say if it is the feeding sensor on your Real Care Baby 3 that is not responding. You know, you've run the test, it's not responding to any bottle that you've tried. Uh, you've run the demonstration and it's still not responding to the bottle. Contact product support. So let's say you've run the test and the baby is not responding to the head forward or the head back. Try these tips first before contacting product support. Uh, make sure all the clothing is removed and restart the troubleshooting test. When you start the test, baby's gonna chime, then it's gonna coo. Put your hand on the baby, give it a wiggle, it's gonna cough, and then pick the baby up off the table, flip it up and over onto its stomach. It's gonna give you a couple of chimes. Then, you know, do the head back. You'll hear the two growl sounds. Lift up the baby's physical left arm, give it a good strike right above its left hip. You'll get the three growl sounds. And then, again, to test the head forward, turn the baby around. So you're looking at the back of the baby's head and give the baby a good snap forward. If it didn't give you the single growl sound, do one more snap. If it still doesn't give you the single growl sound, contact product support. Now let's say it is the head back that is not responding. Again, no clothing, restart the test, baby chimes, then it coos, put your hand on the baby, give it a wiggle, you hear the cough, pick it up off the table, flip it up and over onto its stomach, you get a couple of chimes, do the head forward, baby gives a single growl sound, do the rough handling sensor, Baby gives a couple of growl sounds. And then hold the baby under its arm so you're looking face to face. Give the baby a snap backward. If it does not give you the two growl sounds, do it again. And if it still doesn't trigger after the second snap, contact product support. So let's say you have a baby that is not making any sound. So you've run the test, but no noise was made as you were putting the bottle to the lips, you know, no chiming, no growl sounds, uh, nothing as you were running the test. Or let's say you push down on the button that's above the red light, no chime is made, but yet it's communicating with the control center. That's an indication that the speaker is not functioning. Now, before contacting product support, Try this. You'll need your instructor key and a Phillips head screwdriver. So begin by taking off the battery cover and then removing the two screws that are holding the electronics into the baby. Pull the electronics out and then look inside the tray and you'll see the speaker and there's a little slot area. So you just want to give one blow in the tray. Just all you have to do, just one is all you have to do. And next you have the, what we call the battery control board. Now this could over time, just with use, could wiggle itself out of place. So if that happens, you can lose sound. So what you want to do is to Take your index fingers on this little board right here, and then your thumbs underneath that on the main board, and just kind of squeeze them together, like four or five light squeezes. Reassemble the baby, put the screws on, put the cover on. Once you have reassembled your baby, take the paper clip, push down on the button that's above the red light, one chime, release, just down and up. And if the baby still does not make any sound, contact product support. So 
let's say you have a baby that the students are saying it's not responding to the IDs. Now, first thing you should do before, you know, running a test and everything, look at their report. So on this report here, what you want to do, look at the performance overview box that's in the middle of the page. Look at the left-hand side here where it has all the proper care events. Look at average. So we have here 58 out of 63. So this tells us that there were 63 requested care events. Now what you want to do is look below that where it says ID1 was used how many times. So it shows here that the baby recognized the ID 74 times. So there were 63 requested care events, but there are more IDs that were recognized than requested care events. That tells us that the baby is responding to the ID. Now, baby responds to the ID, whether it's crying for a care event, a fussy event, or a mishandle event. So the surplus of IDs that we have here come from either your fussy events, which do not show up on a report, or your mishandle events. So if you were to look at the report, and again, more times the ID was recognized than requested care events, the ID is being recognized just fine. Now, however, if the report shows fewer times that the ID was recognized than requested care events, then there's a few tests that you can run. So in running the troubleshooting test, uh, make sure the baby is unplugged from the charger because if the baby is plugged into the charger when you're doing the test or the demonstration, the charging disables the antenna and baby will not respond to IDs or diapers or the clothing. So run the test with the baby unplugged from the charger. So if you run the test and baby is not responding to the IDs in any location or any ID in any location, there is an antenna field repair that you can try. So you'll need your instructor key and a Phillips head screwdriver. Remove the electronics from the baby. Uh, so, once you have removed the electronics and have blown in the tray, look at the circuit board. This board right here is called the battery control board. Now, over time, it could wiggle itself out of place just a little bit. When that happens, you can lose sound, you can lose, uh, the antenna may not function either. So what you wanna do is with your index fingers on the battery control board, your thumbs underneath, give about a good four to five light squeezes and then reassemble the electronics back in the baby. run the troubleshooting test again, have, a diff have some different IDs. So if the baby, when you run the test, is not responding to the first ID, you grab a different one, it responds okay to the second ID, then you know that first ID is bad. If, however, any ID you put up to it does not respond uh, after that field repair, contact product support and for next steps. So let's say you have a baby that there are no lights. So you plug the charger into the baby, 
red light does not turn on, green light does not turn on, you've tried different charges, you've tried different outlets, and there's still no lights on the baby. Try this before contacting product support. You are going to need the instructor key and a Phillips head screwdriver. Begin by removing the electronics from the baby. And then look at the side of the electronics that has the battery plugs. Now what you want to do, starting with the plug that is furthest from the batteries, you just want to wiggle and pull and tug. You're going to pull those wires and that plug out of the outlet. And then do the same thing with the plug that is closest to the batteries. Now, sometimes this board right here that we call the battery control board, if it wiggles itself up out of place, you can lose power. So what you want to do is to squeeze the battery control board between your index fingers and the thumbs. Give about a good four or five good squeezes. And starting with the plug that you just removed, Plug that in, then do the next one. And then reassemble the baby. Plug the charger in. If you still do not get any lights, contact product support.